On Monday, IBM made the announcement that it had successfully manufactured the two quantum systems that were planned to be released in 2023 according to its roadmap. Introducing the IBM Quantum System 2, the world's first modular utility scale quantum computer system. One of these is based on a chip called Condor, which is the largest transmon-based quantum processor that has been developed to date. It has 1,121 qubits that are operational. The second is a collection of three Heron chips, each of which has 133 qubits. This chip is the foundation of the second. In IBM's quantum strategy, which also received a significant boost today, smaller chips such as Heron and Flamingo will be crucial. What are quantum chips? The central processing unit, CPU, of quantum computers is something called a quantum computing chip. These chips for quantum computing contain quantum bits, also known as qubits, which are the primary advantage that quantum computing has over classical computation. One of the possible values for a classical computing bit is either zero or one, but a qubit can be either zero or one or both of these values. The ability to process equations and algorithms at a rate that is exponentially quicker than that of conventional computers is something that quantum computers have. Although this technology is only being implemented on a small scale at the moment, it has the potential to bring about a profound shift in the way that we think about computing. Why having a greater number of qubits is crucial. It is essential for a quantum computing chip to have a greater number of qubits since the computational capability of the chip is greatly increased with each additional qubit than it would be otherwise. When it comes to the future of quantum computing, the ability to produce quantum computing chips that contain an increasing number of qubits will be the determining factor. This is because the quantum computing industry is consistently working towards commercial scalability. Why is quantum computing very crucial in the industry? Number one, chemical simulation. The application of quantum computing in the field of chemical simulation has the potential to bring about a number of benefits and a significant improvement in the process. Using this increased computational power, scientists may be able to investigate molecular structures that are larger and more complex. This would enable them to achieve simulations of chemical systems that are more accurate and detailed. This is because classical computers have difficulty accurately simulating the exponential complexity of the quantum world. Quantum chemical simulations make use of a wide range of techniques, each of which varies in terms of the amount of computational space required. Number two, optimization. Transport and logistics are likewise undergoing significant changes as a direct result of the advent of quantum technologies. By facilitating global routing optimization and frequent re-optimizations, the utilization of quantum computers has the potential to make freight transportation more cost-effective and considerably increase customer satisfaction. It is safe to say that the Quantum Approximate Optimization Algorithm, QAOA, has emerged as one of the most well-known algorithms in the field of quantum optimization. It is possible to arrive at approximate solutions to optimization issues by the use of quantum computing in conjunction with classical optimization approaches in QAOA. Quantum annealing, also known as QA, is an additional method that searches for optimal solutions at low energy levels by utilizing quantum fluctuations. One of the most useful applications of quality assurance is the quadratic unconstrained binary optimization QUBO problem, which is also known as the NP-hard Ising model. Number three, machine learning. One additional thing that is significant and which has become relevant ever since ChatGPT was released at the end of the previous year is the potential contribution that quantum computing could make to the development of artificial intelligence, AI, of the next generation. However, it is still debatable whether or not QML will have any advantage at all. On the other hand, the current state of machine learning, ML, is frequently hampered by a limited scope, an inability to adapt to new circumstances, and a lack of generalization abilities. The ability to handle complexity and keep possibilities open is a clear advantage for the current state of machine learning, NML. Having said that, a quantum computer has the potential to facilitate the development of artificial general intelligence, AGI. 
despite the fact that there are some who consider this to be the most significant risk. Improvements to individual qubits that have been made over the course of numerous generations of the Flamingo chip will make it possible for IBM to have error-corrected qubits operational by the end of the decade, according to the newly released information. Despite the fact that these systems are not likely to put things like the encryption schemes that are currently in use at risk, they should be able to safely execute quantum algorithms that are significantly more complicated than anything that we are currently capable of doing. There is a high probability of making mistakes in almost every facet of working with a qubit. In order to prevent quantum algorithms from delivering results that are helpful, it is possible for mistakes to be introduced during the process of setting its starting state, maintaining that state, conducting operations, and reading out the state. In light of this, the reduction of these mistakes has been a primary emphasis of each and every company that manufactures quantum hardware, and significant progress has been made in it. It appears that the progress that has been made has brought us to a place where it is now feasible to carry out some quantum algorithms that are more straightforward on hardware that is already in existence. As a result of the advancements that are projected to be made over the course of the next several years, it is quite likely that this potential will be used to expand to include additional algorithms. The qubit hardware, on the other hand, is not expected to ever reach a point where the error rate is low enough for a processor to properly finish a sophisticated algorithm that may take billions of operations over the course of hours of processing. This is something that is unlikely to happen in the long term. Error-corrected qubits are anticipated to be required for this purpose, as is commonly accepted. These entail distributing the quantum information that is stored in a qubit, which is generally referred to as a logical qubit, across a number of different hardware qubits. There are other qubits that are utilized in order to monitor the logical qubit for mistakes and to enable the correction of those problems. In order to do computations utilizing logical qubits, two things are required. The error rates of the individual qubits in the hardware must be sufficiently low for it to be possible to identify and repair individual errors before new ones occur. This is one of the requirements. The hardware appears to be of sufficient quality for this to function with a certain degree of efficiency, as indicated by several indicators. When it comes to hardware qubits, the second thing that you need is a large quantity of them. This is because the operation of each logical qubit requires many hardware qubits. To construct a computer that is capable of housing a useful amount of logical qubits, it is estimated that we will require 1 million qubits of hardware. Gambetta provided an explanation of how the developments made today fit within the roadmap that IBM has been stating that it anticipates having a useful number of logical qubits by the end of the decade. During the process of getting its hardware ready, Gambetta stated that the company has been using a dual approach developing the capability to produce high-quality qubits in large quantities on a continuous basis has been one component of this. Furthermore, he stated that the fact that Condor has more than 1,000 qubits is evidence that the company is in a healthy position with reference to that facet. It's about 50% smaller qubits, Gambetta said in an interview. The yield is right up there. We got the yield close to 100%. Limiting mistakes that arise when operations are performed on individual qubits or pairs of qubits is the second area that IBM has been focusing closely on. In and of themselves, these actions, which are referred to as gates, might be prone to errors. Crosstalk is a phenomena that occurs when the state of a qubit is altered, which can result in the production of tiny signals that can enter nearby qubits. The Heron processor, which is the smaller of the three processors, is the result of an effort that has been going on for four years to improve gate performance. It's a beautiful device, Gambetta shared his thoughts on the matter. It's five times better than the previous devices, the errors are way less, and crosstalk can't really be measured. As opposed to the fixed frequency technology that the business had been using in the past, the qubits now include tunable couplers, which is the source of many of the advances. Because of this, all gate processes have been sped up with some of them experiencing a tenfold increase. If you spend less time doing anything with a qubit, there will be less opportunities for errors to occur. This is because faults are more difficult to detect. Over the course of numerous revisions of the Eagle chip, which was initially launched by the business in 2021, many of these enhancements were put through their paces for testing. 
an enhanced version of the 133-qubit Heron, which will be released next year and facilitate 5,000 gate operations will be included in the revised roadmap that the business has developed. After then, many versions of the 156-qubit Flamingo processor, which will be released the following year, will be implemented. This processor will be capable of performing gate operations at a rate of up to 15,000 by the year 2028. There is also the possibility that these chips will be joined together to form larger processors, such as Crossbill and Kookaburra, which are also on IBM's roadmap. For instance, seven flamingos may be linked together to build a processor that has a qubit count comparable to that of the original Condor. Testing various methods of linking qubits, both within and between chips, will be the primary emphasis of this particular endeavor. As Michio Kaku says, we're looking at a race, a race between China, between IBM, Google, Microsoft, Honeywell. All the big boys are in this race to create a workable, operationally efficient quantum computer. Because the nation or company that does this will rule the world economy. Having said that, which company do you think will win this race? Share your thoughts in the comment section below. We sincerely hope you enjoy the video. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, The Untold, to see even more of our incredible videos.